Welcome to the I Care for Your Brain Guided Meditation for Brain Injury Survivors, Part 2. Releasing the Rain. Hi there. I told you I'd be back. This is board certified neuropsychologist Dr. Karen Sullivan. We met before. We planted those seed packs together, do you remember? We worked on establishing that calm, peaceful, safe, and hopeful space within yourself where your deep healing is going to happen. Last time we met, you said yes to brain healing in the new year. You said yes to believing that you have the power within yourself to do this. You prepared the soil with intention and you lovingly placed the seeds of safety, hope, and whatever else you decided that was needed to begin your brain healing journey. You created the foundation for what you will stand on for what comes next. Last time, we talked about the shock that happens with brain injuries of all kinds and the broken pieces that get created. We talked about the need for these pieces to be seen, validated, respected, processed, and most importantly, integrated with the purpose of returning you to wholeness. And that's the step we're here to work on together today. We're gonna to take this slow and easy. Just like last time, you're gonna make yourself as comfortable as you can. Close your eyes and return to those slow, deep breaths. What you're hearing is a warm, healing rain. The type of rain that happens at the end of a summer's day well spent. It's not a rain that's cold or scary or uncomfortable. It's a rain that brings renewal and peace and that amazing smell of new beginnings. I want you to let go of the most obvious tension in your body as just like before, you feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper into calm. And just like before, you're becoming more and more comfortable, more and more relaxed, with every breath. Remember that this is the time for you. There is nothing else that you need to do right now but to be here with me. No one needs you to do anything else right now. This is the only task that matters. I want you to remember last time when we were together and you were putting your feet in that rich, healthy, nutrient-dense soil in that special place. I want you to remember how it felt as you kneeled there. Remember the seeds I gave you, those ones you planted, the ones you pushed down with your feet? Remember how you secured them to the earth to start their new growth, to prepare them for their new life. Remember how out of the bottoms of your feet, you grew long connections to the very center of the earth that kept you there tight, secure, connected, and attached. Remember those warm yellow healing sunbeams landing on your face, nurturing those seeds into life? 
What we're going to do right now is check on those seeds and give them the next ingredient that they need to grow. One more deep breath in. And releasing out. As you look up to that sky again, I want you to see that some clouds have started to roll in right in front of the sun. And we're just gonna let them be there. It's okay that the sun has temporarily gone away and that our view has changed. It is getting a little bit gray and that's okay because it's temporary. Since this brain injury, I know that you have been scared and worried and it's very likely that some important things were lost. Some of you have lost function. Some of you have lost memory. Some of you have lost relationships. And I bet many of you have lost the ability to feel safe in your own body and in this brain. Loss brings big emotions and that is human, that is normal. The problem becomes when we don't allow these big emotions to complete their natural cycle. The natural cycle of emotion is that they arrive, build up until they reach a certain tipping point and then they are released flowing through us up and away. But when we experience trauma, too often the buildup keeps happening without that tipping point, creating more and more tension. More and more of an internal distraction. Sucking up more and more of our vital life force. This buildup of tension causes us to tighten, to constrict, becoming so tight and inflexible because we are bracing for the next blow, holding on for dear life. But you can become so tight that you actually close in on yourself and detach from this world, detaching from the people that care about you. And you can become so very numb But these emotions are just trying to keep you safe. These emotions trick you by thinking that if you keep your guard up and you stay inflexible and tight, maybe you won't feel any more pain. Or best yet, maybe you would have been prepared for what happened if only you had stayed on watch. But living like this in this constricted mental space does not allow for life it is suffocating. The risk is that you will stagnate with no fresh air and no space to grow. I'm here today to help you find a way through this darkness so it will not settle on you, taking your breath. The buildup of these dark storm clouds have settled on you. Maybe they've even been following you around, preventing that light from getting in. It can darken everything you see, including your own future and this very important recovery. What I worry about is that if it's too dark, you're not going to notice the small improvements that you are making every day, and you won't be encouraged to continue the very hard work of this recovery. If you are too tight, you cannot soften into people's compassion and concern when it does come your way. And you need that.
Breathing in and letting go as we exhale. I want you to remember that you're still kneeling next to your soil and those precious seeds. Your feet are still joined to the earth's bedrock firmly and securely. You are not alone. I want you to look up and see those dark clouds overhead. There's a tension in the sky that mimics the tension in your bones. And in those clouds, if you look closely, you're gonna see the word fear. The only thing we need to do right now is just acknowledge its presence and see how fear has been influencing you, maybe even controlling you. When we don't acknowledge that fear is present, it has more power over us. By making this commitment with me to your healing and nurturing, you will come to a new vision of yourself. And part of that vision is knowing that the emotions of fear and hopelessness are no longer serving you. I think the time has come when you can look fear directly in the eyes and ask it, what does it call for? What is it that you need from me? I want you to thank it. Thank you so much for your protection and what you taught me. Tell fear, I used to believe that I needed you to stay safe. I thought I needed to carry you with me all the time. I bought into the law the lie that the more prepared I was, the less I would hurt again. But the truth is, you are a thief and you have stolen my ability to be present and my ability to imagine a safe future for myself, a future when I feel all the good things that I deserve to feel. You have stolen my peace with the false promise that I will be safer with you, and it's just not true. By simply seeing you fear and accepting how much you have influenced my perception, I am taking my power back today. Letting your shoulders and your jaw soften. Feeling that guard slowly coming down. Knowing that you are safe right here and right now. Safe in this body. Safe in this world. And safe in this brain. I want you to look up again and now notice that the clouds are no longer stagnant. They're starting to break up and move so much more freely. That first raindrop hits your head and what a relief this brings. There is no longer a need to hold it all in. You are safe to begin the process of releasing Slowly, as more and more raindrops land on your face, you begin to feel an enormous sense of liberation, that you are no longer controlled by this fear. You are allowing fear to move through you and to be released. You know that in this next step of your healing, you need to have room to grow. Those sunbeams need to be able to make their way through these clouds and into your heart 
into your brain and into those seeds of your future. The release of these clouds and this fear does not mean that you will never be afraid. What it means is you're no longer allowing these storm clouds to get stuck over your head. And from now on, these clouds can come and they can go. Feeling fear is human. And if this brain injury has taught you anything, it is about the human experience. But what you do have is the power to change how much it controls you. And I know that part of this healing journey is allowing space for the fear to see it, to acknowledge it, to grieve it, and release it back to the world. Even if just for these few moments that we're together, take a break from it. You cannot carry it around all day, every day. Releasing fear often creates a pathway to experience those deep, painful feelings of loss that have come along with this brain injury. Grief is an emotion that takes a lot of energy. What I'm asking is that you reclaim some of this energy that has been tied up in your unexpressed grief. Because in this healing journey, I need you to be able to reinvest that energy. Releasing your fear, your grief, is not forgetting what you have been through. That fear has taught you so very much. You have learned a lot about human suffering. You have learned so much about the power of empathy. By releasing some of your fear today, you are giving yourself permission to build a new life in its place. By releasing fear and grief today, you are choosing to get unstuck and consider that brighter days are ahead. I thank you, fear, for what you gave me when I needed it, but I no longer choose to be tied to your life-limiting power. I take my power back today for me and for my brain. I want you to look down at that soil again and see that that healing rain is now soaking into those seeds, nurturing them and supporting their fragile new life. Take a minute to think about what is in those raindrops. What is it that you so badly needed to release? This is a personal question that only you can answer. Maybe throughout this time, you shed a couple tears. I want you to know that it's really okay and it's actually therapeutic. Crying releases endorphins and healing neurotransmitters like oxytocin and serotonin that also encourage the brain's regrowth and the amazing process of neuroplasticity. 
Crying is the body's way of releasing stress hormones that have built up over time. Releasing the fear today means that you are choosing a more flexible nervous system that can actually feel and be present. You are moving from numbness to presence. You are releasing the past and welcoming the future. This rain is cleansing. It is part of nature's cycle and it brings life. Looking up to the sky one last time, I want you to see how those clouds have totally cleared. Smell how the air is purified and fresh. You have moved those dark storm clouds away for today. Without rainfall, there is no life. There's no growth. I want you to visualize your heart. And I want you to see that a new space has been opened up today. This is where the seeds of safety and hope have been planted and now watered. There is the promise of a new day you are ready and you deserve this next day. Over these next few days and weeks, these seeds are going to be taking hold and growing deep under the surface, just like within you, just like within your brain. The next time we're together, we're really going to be ready to begin the journey of encouraging and supporting neuroplasticity at the cellular level. These last two sessions were really all preparation. <laughs> we are going to use evidence-based visualizations to help you regain abilities, regain function, and work towards the acceptance of this new and awesome you. You can return to this recording over and over again, knowing that each time you are bringing more and more healing directly into your mind, your body, your soul, and in your brain. For now, I want you to take care of yourself and know that we will meet up again soon. Bye.